Summary Zoom is a function in PowerPoint that gives you an effective way to present a labeled image. That is why in this video, I'm going to show you the slides that I used in creating this awesome menu. So if you are in engineering, architecture, real estate, medical sciences, microbiology, brand implementation, any profession where you need to present ideas, uh, concepts or projects and you can't physically bring them into the room to be able to show your audience its different parts, this is your best approach. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Slide. Behind the Slide is not a tutorial series. I just take you through the editing view of slides and sequences that I've already created so that you can get some tips and insights from what I did and apply them to your own process. Greetings everyone. It's always good to have you here. Now let's take a look at these slides. Be nice to your audience, welcome them warmly. So this sequence is a welcome sequence. I'll probably just tell you a little bit about how I did it. And then we land on the menu. Now this is the menu that I've created with the summary zoom. And I'm going to just give you a slight run through on what, how each element came to be and how it works, okay? Now, but first of all, let's take a look at it. I'm, I want you to note this, that I'm using only one button the next arrow. I'm only pressing the next arrow and the presentation advances in an order that makes it convenient for me to present so I don't have to worry about anything else. Now take a look at this. Next arrow, it goes to the first item I have on my summary zoom. Next arrow and it goes back. Next arrow and it goes to the next item. Next arrow and it goes back. And it keeps going on like that until we make it through the entire sequence. So what this simply is, is that I have this item I'm presenting, this project, this concept, this idea, and it's probably very visual like this is, and I need to be able to demonstrate, I need to be able to show my audience each of those parts and give some kind of detail. But that detail is a little bit too much, so to speak, for me to just splash it all on the, on the full screen and my audience will be able to get each part of it. So I need to go closer isolate that item, that part of it, and present just that. But I'm still carrying my audience along because they know what part of my visual we are in. And then when we are done with that part, we come right out again. So they are following the entire sequence. They are seeing literally the big picture. So regardless of where we are, they know where the big picture is. They know what parts of the picture are coming next. So they're following, they, you carry them along and it's easier for them to understand what you're trying to explain and to follow through to follow uh, to follow where you're going so let's take a look at how these slides look okay now this again i said i'm going to give you guys a slight a brief idea of how this is uh, the the um what did i call this again welcome screen looks like um i just used a simple um um morph transition um from this screen, I just created this rectangle object and typed the text into it with, of course, the image in the background. So I, I duplicate that slide and uh, in the next slide, what I simply do is I scale it to this size you're seeing here. But I simply do this. I just, I just scale it down, reduce the size of the text and everything and position it accordingly to this particular position it is here. And when I apply a morph transition, let me go to the transition so you can see it. There it is, morph. I apply morph transition to this slide number two, and this is what it gives me. Sorry, this is what it gives me. I, let me go back in the morph. You see that? With the morph transition, this is what I get. These other objects at the bottom of the screen, to, uh, because they're going to be part of the morph transition, what I simply did was to put them on the screen in the first slide. You can see them, they're here. So that when they move, when we move to the next slide and the morph transition is applied, I simply move them to this spot. 
and they act out an animation on their own so that's it for that now let's get into this summary zoom okay if you look at these slides i have here by this uh, panel you see that there's a slide that's called summary section that's you know it, okay in powerpoint there's such a thing as sections right not just slides but you can also create sections in which you have slides so the summary zoom utilizes that instructional system it recognizes sections so it's going to apply that summary zoom based on the sections that you have now the good thing is this summary zoom function when you activate it it automatically creates sections for you you can create the sections by yourself and it will still work the same way so in this case the summary zoom when you want to apply a summary zoom you um insert zoom the zoom function is in the insert panel in the insert tab so under the insert tab you will find zoom there and in the zoom you will see three categories of zoom there's summary zoom section zoom and slide zoom now the summary zoom is the, is the one that we are we're talking about in this particular video now i've already applied it here but what happens is when you click on summary zoom it sort of gathers the the, the um, sections that you want to put in that zoom and creates a zoom slide for you let me create a new presentation just for, for us to demonstrate this. I'm, I'm creating, I'm making that uh, uh, layout blank. Okay, now I want to make a summary zoom and I go to insert zoom, summary zoom. It's going to ask me which of the slides do I want to make a zoom out of. So I should have created the slides first. So let me just create a new slide, new slide, new slide, new slide. Okay, I'm just going to do four of them. But to be able to differentiate them, I'm going to have a uh, Oh, where is this text box? Okay, um, slide one. Okay, um, let me increase that just so that we can see it in the summary zoom. You will, you will, you will understand where, where I'm going with this. Okay, let me delete all this. I'm just okay, hold on. Um, copy that, paste it here. Slide two. Good. Um, paste it here. Slide three. Paste it here. Slide four. Okay, okay, just for, just for that reason. Now let's uh, insert, insert zoom, summary zoom. You see now it's given me all the slides that I have in this presentation and wants me to pick which one of them are going to be part of this summary zoom. So I select them all. I want to create a menu that has four links in it, okay? So I, I, I click insert and it actually generates another slide and it calls it the summary section you can see it has automatically named each of these sections it has named this one the summary section it has named it has taken this first slide and put in section one the second slide in section two section three section four respectively for each of them and it has given me this summary slide i don't need to have any of this stuff here so just like i did in the other presentation i'm going to delete this and now this is my summary zoom uh, um, um, widget so what i did with this presentation is that i i did i took this summary zoom uh, this box and just scaled it to fill the screen because that is what my uh, it suits the purpose of my particular presentation it doesn't have to be that way with your presentation now look at these these are the the links, the clickable, the boxes of the of this summary zoom. Now you see, you can have, you can scale them to whatever size you want. You can change their location. You can you can move them around. But the thing is, if if you are going to make all these adjustments to it, you need to have made sure that you have all the slides you want in that summary zoom before you start making changes. Because if you have to introduce uh, another one, like in this case, I have only four. If I wanted to introduce a fifth slide the moment i bring it in it'll scatter everything and i'll have to rearrange and resize everything again so i have to make sure that i've done that sizing before i introduce anything new so it's always good to plan know exactly how many um which and which uh, slides you're going to make a part of this and have that set before you begin introducing the summary zoom function in the first place now this is the same thing i've done here if you look at our slide sequence here sorry that's our summary zoom you can see that I've scaled them down to a considerable size and um, the size that suits what I want to do and I tried to make them this exact same size. I scaled them all together so that none of them is bigger than the other so that the text size will be uniform. 
So I have them all uh, in, this, in the appropriate positions as you can see because of the nature of the labels. I have guest room uh, right over the guest room, bedroom here, sitting area here, bathroom here, kitchen and balcony. So that's the reason why I needed to reposition them in a custom way because my presentation requires that. Yours may not require that, but this is what mine needed. So you have that flexibility. Now, look at the slides that I used in creating this summary zoom, okay? You can see the sections are appropriately named. I, re I renamed them balcony section, sitting section, guest section. Summary zoom is still standing. So now you can see I create these slides and the summary zoom simply brings them in. When I, make, when I create the summary zoom, it is that simple. Now here's the thing, you, can, you may notice that these are transparent behind them and there's, there's no big deal. I could actually make them not to be transparent if that's what suits my presentation. But in this case, they need to be transparent because we need to see the, the image through it. It's simply a label in this case. Now, if I disable that transparency, this is what we get. Balcony, that's it, looking exactly as it looks with the same background and everything. But when I enable, when I right click on it and enable zoom background, excuse me, if I right click and enable zoom background, it becomes transparent. And that's, that's all, it's as simple as that. Now we have our summary zoom, we have our awesome menu. You can feel free to do anything you want with this. You have the liberty to put just text describing this bullet point if you will. You have the liberty to insert a video here if you want. So when you zoom into that part of your presentation, what can actually play is a video instead of just you talking or just text. You can create animations that are put in there. Whatever needs, whatever you can put in a slide, you put there. The only thing is this, whatever you put in that slide is going to also show up here. So if you don't want to crowd this menu, you might be, you know, you might want to reconsider what you put in that slide. However, you can still create other slides that that slide will lead up to so that those slides can offer further um, detail and you can use that to uh, augment the contents of the first slide. But either way, you can go deep as you want. But in this case, I wanted to demonstrate how you can do this with just a few slides. You're simply describing an image or the contents of an image using a labeling system that you zoom into each label and offer a brief explanation and you zoom out. So let's look at how this thing works one more time. We'll just start from here. Okay, so I'm just tapping next arrow and my presentation advances. So as I'm making my presentation to my audience, I just, I have my remote device in my hand and I'm just hitting next arrow. I'm just hitting next, I'm hitting next, I'm hitting next, and it just keeps on going, next. I don't have to do anything, I don't have to worry about which slide I'm going to move to or anything. It's just a simple, straightforward, labeled explanation thing. So that's it for this video. I hope you got something useful out of it. And if you did, feel free to show your love by liking it, subscribing or following this channel. And I'll see you in the next one.